let's uh, make a point here that is incredibly important, but it's usually something people don't think about. You know, it's kind of like one of the things that will give you a clue is you look in any professional photographer's bag that's like going out doing a shoot. It's like, uh, why has dude got a flash in his camera when he's going to be shooting all day outdoors in the sunlight? What would be the reasoning for that? Look, okay, your camera, I don't care how much dynamic range your camera's got, your camera has something called limited dynamic range. And even if you're going to be shooting an event outdoors, you know, the best composition may be with the sun behind the uh, shoulders of your subject. And uh, for necessity of uh, bokeh qualities, for example, I mean, that might be very well be the best shot. Creates issues, you know, unless you want to uh, mm, pack a gigantic reflector with you, which nobody does, <laughs> in their satchel bag, bring a speed light and a pair of wireless triggers with you. Or at the very least, a speed light, because I've made like a thousand videos stating that you got to get your damn flash off your damn camera. You know, uh, speed light illumination sitting on top of you will hot you. Well, that may be good for pictures of... Uh, of uh, paparazzis uh, taking, uh, you know, shots of Angelina Jolie getting out of her limousine, it makes for very crappy, unflattering pictures. The reason you're carrying a speed light is, what, well, it's just fill flash, you know, it's going to fill... Yeah, but what is ultimately, what's the real meaning behind it? It gives you an enormous, unless you want to screw around hardcore in Lightroom and do selective exposure leveling, you can actually do selective raising of the exposure of certain parts. Yeah, okay, that's all well and fine, but that is uh, pissing time away. I'm not, I'm not a fan, as much as I sit behind the computer all day long, all day long, and I do that, I don't want to spend any more time behind it than I have to. What I'm doing is I'm actually compressing the dynamic range of the scene from my uh, typical background illumination and my subject. It doesn't even have to be... Okay, you don't even have to have, you ideally want, um, since you'll be using wireless triggers and most of them are dumb triggers, no big deal. You know, if most of your subject is going to be like with an arm's length or a little bit beyond, it's like I can turn this sucker on, okay, I'm going to set it uh, for, uh, yeah, I'm going to set it for one thirty second power. You know, I, I don't I don't have to be absolutely specific. People think they need TTL flash photography. No, you don't. No. The only thing that's important is that I shorten and compress the dynamic range between my specular and my subject matter. And what that does by compressing the dynamic range, it gives me enormous latitude of just hitting that exposure slider in Lightroom or whatever application you use. Because now you've not only given, you've done several vital things. You've taken your subject matter and you've uh, shortened the dynamic uh, range between it and the background, which makes messing around with it in Lightroom or whatever application you use easier. But no matter how good of a lens or how good of a camera you got, you've given your subject two additional things. Contrast separation from the background and saturation detail that ambient lighting won't do. Okay. Now, no matter how sensitive you think your camera is, it's not as sensitive as sending out uh, a uh, enormous amount of ba bam light that hits your subject while the shutter is nice and wide, wah, and you capture your subject. It also freezes the subject, so when you're shooting a slightly slower shutter speed, say 250 of a second, it's the sync speed of your camera, that's fine. It gives you all sorts of opportunities of opening up your iris, exposing for the background. It actually gives you all these different things. Saturation. Uh, separation, it gives you compression and dynamic range, okay, very important, so, next, you know, never, anybody that, is, if you see somebody out in the daylight, it's like, why is dude carrying a speed light in the middle of the daylight, or someone in an event, it's like, why is that photojournalist got, you know, it's like 2 a.m. and the sun is beating down, you know, like a sledgehammer on your head, why the hell does that person have speed light? That, those are the many reasons why. Can we go over those reasons again? Dynamic range compression. Okay. Compressing the dynamic range from your subject and your background. You're giving yourself color saturation of your subject because 
that incident light is hitting your subject, it's reflecting back, and it is adding immense detail and saturation to your sensor. Because, bam! Ambient light, no matter how hard the sun is, and I don't care if you're in the middle of uh, Zaire, in, in the middle of the summer in Zaire, and it's 110 degrees, and the sun's beating down on you, you know, like crazy, it's still the ambient lighting is not enough. Dynamic range compression, color saturation, it gives you subject separation between subject and foreground, and it does a few other things that are incredibly important. It also gives you a stop motion of your subject. You can shoot some slower shutter speeds, and that gives you control over the background and lets you expose for the background and raise for your subject. That is really, really important. That is basically one of the core fundamental principles of professional photography outdoor where you got one speed light, one studio strobe. Is you you can make daylight look like dusk or dusk look like daylight. No big deal, no problem. Well well that affects my subject. I don't give a damn what the subject. You know, I raise my subject to the value I want. I expose for the background Okay, and I don't care. Well, I do. You have to talk about uh, ambient versus uh, flash percentages or ratios, lighting ratios. So you do care, but ultimately, no. You just expose to your background, make it look however the hell you want, and then you raise your subject matter to whatever grade of illumination you want. And that makes screwing with the shot in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever you want so much easier because now the dynamic range from your background to your subject where it was like this, now it's like, wow, it's like this. And messing with this is a lot easier than messing with this. Get your mind out of the gutter. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'll edit out that later. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a sense of humor. I've got no faith in you at all. Uh, so this is an incredibly important part of professional photography. This is why you carry a speed light and daylight. Compression and dynamic range, color saturation, subject separation, the ability to manipulate separate exposure for lighting, layer, layers of lighting between the background and subject. Very important, and also you're getting that color saturation in in a brief period of time. That, that no amount of ambient lighting, you know, you're not sitting there doing one, one second handheld exposures. You know, there's no amount of ambient lighting anywhere on the earth at any point in time that's good enough, and it's going to top, you know, hitting this, boom. And it doesn't matter if this is, uh, if you're like a stop, stop and a half uh, underexposed. You know, since you have this uh, set on manual, same as using this as a dumb flash, and you know, you can get 90% of the way. You've like, no, like 80% of my subjects are going to be a shot at like between six feet and 12 feet. Who cares? I'll dial in one thirty-second uh, power, and that's perfect. I had to tweak it a little bit in Lightroom. It's not a problem because my dynamic range has gone from this to this, and this is easier to deal with than that. It's just that simple. Light lighting. Lighting ratios, which is why professional photographers in the studio all have light meters, contrary to some morons who uh, say that a light meter is a throwback technology. But we put no faith or trust in the people that say stupid stuff like that. At least I don't. Thanks. Catch you later. Like this video and drop me a buck or two, or tell me jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy, 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 joy, joy, joy. Be happy. Catch you later. Bye.